Hello, I'm Rob Hirschfeld, CEO and co-founder of RackN, and this is my presentation about how to slay your five most critical automation dragons. Now, when we talk to customers and people in the enterprise, we see very clearly that there are five common themes, five challenges that enterprises face when trying to create significant game-changing automation efforts. And this talk will help you destroy and challenge those dragons. And we know this is a problem. If, if you look at research that Gartner has presented, you know there is a challenge here. Um, that modern infrastructure, infrastructure modernization efforts frequently fail, and this undermines your credibility. If you are having trouble convincing other teams, your own team, your bosses, company executives, about why automation is important, part of it is because we haven't figured out as an industry how to make these efforts successful. And this talk uh, directly addresses why those efforts are so prone to failure and why the results are so difficult to achieve. And the way I would start with this is if you think through what's going on in your org organization, if you ask individual teams, um, and we did a round, a round table with Red Monk, um, where one of the executives there said something absolutely stunning. They said, it's not that we don't have enough automation, we actually have too much automation, but it's all locked into our departments, our departments, our automation efforts. The things that we're doing work just fine inside our teams within our organizations. And that is the wrong outcome. Being just fine for automation projects within your team is really overlooking the benefit that we're trying to achieve by connecting systems together, actually working across silos. And that's really where the automated automation dragons live. If we're automating things in an isolated team, then we're really not getting the benefit of automation. We're just making jobs easier within our system, within our team. So these isolated teams are our number one dragon. But that didn't happen alone. We've built up isolated teams because we have other challenges. Other dragons have come before. And in this case, what we're saying is, is that isolated teams are a consequence of inconsistent delivery. Teams have had to protect themselves from other teams not delivering uh, results consistently with automation. And that is because they were very inflexible. If things changed within a, a group or a silo or across a company, that would often break things, leading to the inconsistencies, but that automation was very expensive to maintain. So we often added people into the process, or we, uh, we had to add buffers into the delivery so that uh, we could check and audit the results. We really didn't want connecting things together. And our systems are inflexible because our systems are based on unreliable tooling. Uh, to me, this is really a component of how our tooling has been designed. When we build our DevOps infrastructure automation tooling, our, our Ansible's, our Chef, Puppet, our Terraforms, uh, it is not uncommon for those systems to fail in unexpected ways, to fail um, when we think we've got something right um, the failure rates are way too high. And that leads us to hard coding. Hard coding things then drives upwards in this stack. And then finally, and one of the things that we see as a real culprit here is this idea of single purpose tooling. So part of what makes tooling unreliable is not the tool itself, because I know a lot of you are listening to this and saying, but I love Ansible and it works every single time. It does if you are the one pushing the button. Um, and even then, I know it's not every single time. But the challenge here is if only if you're using a whole bunch of tools to accomplish a whole bunch of individual systems, they're not connected together. We're not actually feeding tools together as a chain. We're actually just dealing with one tool at a time. And that is a really poor design that makes it much harder for us to improve the reliability of the system, to connect things together, to exercise and test and prove that things are working. Because the more we're using these tools, the more connected and integrated they are, it, the easier it becomes for us to spot errors, fix errors, invest the time in making sure that we're not 
glossing over issues when we find them. That's really the goal here is not to just do something one time or with one tool, but to build an integrated pipeline of automation within our departments and more importantly, across our departments. And so how do we kill, how do we slay these automation dragons? Well, there's a very concrete way to build up the stack and address these five critical issues. But I don't like building them in as a stack because it's really a virtuous cycle. I prefer to look at them as concentric rings of automation. So let me describe them to you this way. IAC or infrastructure as code is one of the core defining elements of the last several years of DevOps and automation tooling. And what it does is it allows us to defeat single purpose tooling. And if you're used to like a Terraform, that's still single purpose tooling. The, the idea here with infrastructure as code is to actually treat our automation as code, meaning dev, test, prod, integration, pipelines, all of these pieces together. So we really need to look at IEC not as a single tool, but as a system and a process of working together to build automation. That then lets us defeat uh, unreliable tooling by improving use reusability. It is absolutely essential that we improve the reusability of our systems. That doesn't just mean the modules or the tools that we use. It actually means the automation that we inject into those tools, the playbooks, the plans, those end-to-end -end operations. If we improve reusability here, that means that we do less work building systems. Now we have to maintain what we build, but once we've built it, that means that other people in our organization can and should be reusing the same code modules. This idea of just building within my silo for my own stuff is really an anti-pattern for building cross-functional automation. And the only way we can do that is when we build our automation is if we've built it on top of strong abstractions. That means that when I'm working with a system, instead of trying to define for a Dell or an HP or an Amazon or a Google or a Microsoft, what I actually should be doing is working with a machine, a virtual machine or a standard machine type, and then allow the variations to be abstracted away. That way, when I go to reuse work, I can put it at the right place. The details of that system are still important. I'm not talking about ignoring the differences. They are very important, but the systems that we're using need to have enough abstractions that I can work at my level of the stack and then generally be able to plug that into a broader sequence. And the only way we can do that is with abstraction. Abstraction requires investment because you need to be able to work at the abstraction level in your teams that care about the layer below need to be able to support it below. And there is some extra work in building abstractions into a system, but that makes your systems more reusable, makes them ultimately faster. It means that you can work higher in the stack for the people that do it. None of this stuff is free. You have to spend some extra time building reusability, collaborating with other teams, so that when they make changes, you can test and validate your changes, back to infrastructure as code. When you build a system up, that you can actually support the abstractions and understand the abstractions because they make a little bit more work to understand how the system works. Your learning curve is a little steeper because of the abstractions. But the benefit here is really considerable because once we're able to have shared abstractions, then we can actually have shared processes. If we can build code and automation that is reusable and abstracted, then other departments, other teams can share those processes. It's absolutely essential that we are able to do that. This is part of Racken's mission. We actually work on making shared processes, not just within a company, but actually across our entire customer bases. Because so much of the work that we do for infrastructure is really routine and standardized once we have reusable and abstracted components. That allows us to take on the toil and the maintenance, do things once, and then translate them into system-wide benefits, not just within your company, but across all the companies. And that really boosts productivity in very powerful ways. Ultimately, what we're doing here is driving collaboration. Some of the collaboration might not even be visible to you. If 
you are working on code that has been battle hardened by another company at another site, even for a different purpose, potentially than your company fulfills, you are still working with other people. You are getting the benefit of that collaboration. Even better, you should be able to take your processes, your pipelines, your automation and show it to other teams, the teams that are upstream and downstream from you and be able to inject and manage your bits and pieces within this system. By doing that, you actually improve visibility. You improve your ability to show somebody what you're doing, to see what they're doing, and then work together to solve problems. That destroys the silos that plague our automation efforts. Um, and it does take some work to collaborate with other teams. You have to change your way of thinking and approaching problems. But this transparency, this ability to build shared processes and connect them together, fundamentally enables collaboration within organizations. So here is where RackN uh, will show you how to solve all of your problems, but unfortunately it's not so simple. Hello. Oh, hey Jay, yeah, I, I'm in the middle of giving a presentation. This isn't a, a very good time. I understand the customer needs the the change right away. I, can can I can I do that and uh, finish the presentation? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, ten minutes. I've got ten whole minutes. All right, all right. Uh, I'll call you when it's done. Sorry for an interruption, but this might actually be a good chance to show you exactly what we mean by infrastructure pipelines and how they work together. What we're going to do here is actually fix what is a real problem in the field. Uh, some of our customers have been experiencing a challenge where their SSD drives were uh, losing uh, storage capacity much more quickly uh, than expected. It turns out to be a firmware bug um, in which uh, sectors of a drive are marked um, out of commission when they shouldn't be. There's a firmware patch for that, which is great, but that patch comes with a script that has to be applied uniquely to each drive, and then the systems have to be rebooted. From the vendor's perspective, this is a manual effort, meaning you have to log into each server that you have. For some of our customers, that's 30,000 servers, um, and apply the patch um, to each drive, enumerating each drive, and then reboot the machine, um, something that is physically impossible uh, for our customers to do. The good news is that we worked with the vendor to create an automated task for this. Um, we've successfully applied it already for another customer, and now we have other customers who are looking to add that into the process here. And I want to illustrate what that looks like for you using Digital Rebar. Um, and this is Digital Rebar. I have an environment set up uh, to apply the patch to Bank N, and we're going to go through and, and work through what that looks like um, for their East and West Coast clusters. But the story here actually begins earlier in Bank N's Git repos, where the code that they use to do their automation lives. And here, what you'll see is the Bankend specific content. It's very small because they're really just adding into the existing uh, deep libraries of rack and pipelines. They can add in a task um, to do the actual fix. I happen to have that right here. And all I have to do is update it in Git and then push the fix um, into their system. And the way this works is there is a webhook uh, from GitHub, uh, GitLab in this case, into their systems and it's automatically gonna get picked up. So I don't do any editing or work inside of those systems. I don't do any editing or work by hand. I'm actually doing it all in a place where I can get a code review and sample. And then I'm skipping that in this case. Um, but what is going on here is we're gonna be able to take that file and fix it and push it into their system. Now, what I will stress before we go and start using Digital Rebar to apply this fix is that this is part of how infrastructure automation pipelines work. What we're doing is we're injecting a specialized task into their existing automation pipelines that doesn't change any of their pipelines. It's literally just picking up new capabilities into the system. The version management, the controls, all of the pieces in these pipelines remain as part of our standardized libraries. And then our customers are able to inject or add in the pieces that they need to make that work. Um, 
what that looks like when you decompose a pipeline segment is that it has standardized components around the work that that pipeline segment does. Inside of that process, we are then able to go into standard um, automation points and expand the pipeline function. Here we are adding a task into the work. We could do additional classification work or testing or validation steps within the standardized pipeline so that each customer has exactly what they need to be successful, but never ends up with custom code. So let's look at how that looks. So here I'm gonna go ahead and, and create a new cluster. Our, um, we're gonna go ahead and take this West Coast cluster, which I have control for over here. Um, that already has uh, this pipeline applied to it. So let's say the machines have a pipeline that we've been using. This is our universal bank end pipeline, excellent. And in this pipeline, I have a uh, pre, what we call pre flexi flow. This means that this runs before uh, any other operations are done. So I can come in and there is a bank end firmware fix. This is this that task that you saw me editing in our in the GitLab, and I'm going to go ahead and add that into the automation process for the system. That seems pretty straightforward. And now, if I come back over to the cluster and expand the cluster to a couple new machines, so I'm going to provision a few machines, apply that. And then as these machines get set up, what you'll notice here is that the automation is going to include this bank end firmware task. Uh, there's a couple of, of icon changes that indicate that it has been uh, is in the process and is working. And now this has been um, accounted for in the new provisioning machines. And the same would be true. So now any future clusters that we need to build, say we were building an East Coast cluster, then in that case, what we would be able to do is go through this process again, bring up five of those machines. Everything would go through this bank end cluster. Here's that pipeline that we were setting. Excellent. And so as we go through and do this setup, we are going to see that every machine here is going through that pipeline, same pipeline. All we've done here is add in that extra firmware check step. And that means that every machine in the future that gets provisioned by bank N will automatically be checked and patched if necessary. This is the beauty of pipelines. We can actually validate the steps are coming up as they go. So in that case, we've been able to very quickly take working firmware patches from one customer, standardized equipment, standardized use case, we have the right abstractions, and build it into pipelines for all of our other customers. This is the type of, of process that we go through every day of the week where we are constantly improving the general automation capabilities. Let me take just a second and call Jay and let him know that we've got this thing going. Okay, Jay, uh, you should be good to go. All the servers, not just the new servers. Oh, oh, uh, okay, well, hold on. I can, I can do that. We can go back through um, and apply it to the other servers. If I go, there's a blueprint for bank N already. All we have to do is take that bank N system, add in the firmware task um, into that, into the day two operations blueprint system. Okay, that looks good. I've added it into the blueprint. And all I have to do is apply it to the machines that haven't yet been patched. That looks good. It's these, um, five West Coast servers. That's what's showing on your system too. Excellent. Okay, I got them. All I have to do is apply that blueprint into these systems. That looks great. Here's the firmware fix. I'm going to go ahead and commit that. And it's running that one task, nothing else, just doing that one thing. So it should be all good to go. You see it? Excellent. All right, Jay, let the customer know. I think we're in the clear. So that is exactly how we are able to take infrastructure as code, reuse and abstraction and apply them in ways that allow us to have shared processes and collaboration across our customer base. Incredibly powerful use of digital rebar. And it's not just that digital rebar can do this work. It's actually architectural. It's foundational to how RackN has designed our product because we understand that you have to slay 
the automation dragons to be successful. You have to put these pieces together in a way that enables collaboration and shared process. And the only way you do that is if your product is designed to have reuse, abstraction, and infrastructure as code at its foundational core. So I apologize for the interruption, but hopefully this was helpful to illustrate the points that we've been talking about. Um, but in the presentation, I had promised that we would solve your problems. And I wanna get back to that and go ahead and do that. So where is the problem? What is happening? And fundamentally, the issue here is the way we are building automation is self-defeating. That We are literally making it harder to do the work. And it's important to ask ourselves, who is keeping us in this cycle? Why are we building tools that make it hard to collaborate? And why do companies keep asking for tools that make it hard to collaborate? Well, the problem is us. Um, we have this cycle where we keep building single use tools because they're easy, they're easy to sell, they're easy to use. And then the enterprise silos then build walls and protections so that they don't have to collaborate and share and connect these things into, into, into pipelines together. And so what we recognize here is that you can't do this work alone, that you have to be able to coordinate the systems together. It's why we start with so much automation out of the box. It's why we build and manage and train and teach and collaborate with our customers so deeply to help them be more proficient at doing this work. Now that doesn't mean we take it over from them, just the opposite. Racken's design is to make customers self-sufficient and self-managed, that's why we're a software company. But we recognize that you, you, don't, you can't do that collaboration all by yourself. You need somebody who's designed the platform. And this is why we do it this way. The infrastructure landscape is very complex. Um, there are a lot of different pieces and components. Operations teams really have to succeed in multiple dimensions. And even though a lot of these components are very similar, especially vendor to vendor, they are not the same. And you have to be able to cope with that. And we don't want to have our customers only be looking at multi-vendor choices in one part of the stack. It's definitely powerful and we see customers getting tremendous dollar savings and supply chain benefits from being able to multi-source their physical layer components. But as the Broadcom acquisition of VMware is showing us, that it's also very important to be able to have multiple vendors and multiple sources at your operating system and platform levels. You need to be able to have systems and platforms that are running your operations that are able to switch vendors, change things out, address uh, different focuses. Now you might choose to have a preferred vendor, most of our customers do, but the ability to have alternate vendors or pick better products for different use cases and still have them operated in a consistent way is the very essence of the type of abstractions that Racken has been building. And then on top of all that, what we see is that building an infrastructure platform enables each team to then use the tools they want to do their work, whether it's compliance or governance, service orchestrations, um, into, internal developer platforms or CI CD pipelines, those are typically are typically siloed decisions, team decisions. We find a lot of our customers don't try to impose a corporate mandate for those types of tools, but they do get a lot of benefit by having a consistent API, a consistent platform delivering infrastructure controls and managed systems. The, the benefits of doing that with the right abstractions is immensely high. And that is exactly what RackN provides with Digital Rebar. We cover 100% of this control stack. We are able to uh, build and deliver data center infrastructure automation from nothing through bare metal to installing platforms to running VMs on the platforms and up. And better, we do it without forcing you to displace the tools that you like to use. If you're using Ansible, if you're using Terraform, if you have other platforms and tools, different CMDBs, different uh, orchestration systems or ticket systems, those are actually designed to be integrated in. We know that our customers have a lot of working automation. The question is to have a way to consolidate and pull those together into a consistent pipeline. And in some cases, we will help you phase out places where 
those systems are not as infrastructure as code or as maintainable or collaborative as you want them to be, but you don't have to do that work all at once. The beauty of any uh, infrastructure platform and pipelining system is that you can take that work and piece it in over time. I hope that I've been able to explain to you how we've gotten into this place where our systems are not supporting each other, not building the collaborative shared processes that companies need to success, succeed in digital transformation. And I hope that you'll uh, give us a call. We have a ton of material about infrastructure as code, infra uh, platform engineering, Broadcom migration, um, really improving your operations environment. But at the end of the day, it really does come down to how we execute on that vision using digital rebar. And in all those cases, I would suggest that you try it. Download a trial, see how we deliver on this functionality and check it out for yourself.